Example 17.8. In this example, steam is flowing inside of a cast iron pipe at a temperature of 320 Celsius. The pipe has a thermal conductivity of 80 watts per meter Kelvin and an inner and outer diameter of 5 and 5.5 centimeters respectively. The pipe is covered by a 3 centimeter thick glass wool insulation whose thermal conductivity is 0 0.05 watts per meter per kelvin. This is lost to the surrounding at a temperature of 5 Celsius by natural convection and radiation with a combined heat transfer coefficient of 18 watts per meter square kelvin. Taking the heat transfer coefficient in inside to be 60 watts per meter square kelvin, we need to determine the rate of heat loss from the steam per unit length to the pipe. And also we need to determine the temperature drop across the pipe shell and across the insulation. In order to solve this problem, we're going to assume a steady state condition, one dimensional the radial direction, constant properties, and neglect contact resistance. So to start, we're gonna redraw this uh, system, this uh, cylindrical system, and we're gonna see the resistances that we have over here. So what we have is we have the cast iron pipe, and then we have the insulation, and then we have the outside. So if you notice in the inside, we have T infinity one, which is the internal value that we have for the steam flowing inside of the pipe. So this is your cast iron, this is your insulation, and then outside over here, we have T infinity two, okay? So if we do the nodes of the resistances, notice that the first resistance that we have is, an, is a convection resistance and it's called Ri for being an internal resistance. R1, it is the conduction resistance taking place inside of the cast iron. The third resistance is R2 and is the conduction resistance inside of the insulation and the last resistance that we have is going to be RO that is the convection resistance taking place outside uh, from the pipe and the insulation system okay so now let's look at a little bit of geometries in terms of what we have we know that the inner diameter is equal to five centimeters so we know that the R1 is going to be 2.5 uh, centimeters. We know R2 is going to be half of the diameter, so it's going to be equal to 2.75 centimeters. And we know R3, so this is R located at R1, this is R2, and this is R3. R3 is simply going to be R2 plus the thickness that it was given. Um, of the thickness so this we have it to be so we had that the thickness was three centimeters so it's going to be 5.75 centimeters okay and we're going to use that information in order to be able to get the different areas that we're going to need so the area that we have the surface area that we have located at um so the surface area that we have located at, at r1 it is simply going to be two by R1 L and we take that to be and notice that we are doing it per unit length so we are assuming that the length is going to be one meter and that gives us point uh, one five seven meters square and then we have the surface area at position three and that is going to be two pi R3 L once again the length we take it to be one meter and we replace the values and we get 0.361 meters square. Okay, now using this geometry, we're gonna calculate all the different resistances. So we have Ri, and as we said, Ri is the convection resistance that is in the internal component, which is carried by the steam. So it's one over Hi, and the surface area that we had at that location, and then if we substitute those values, we get that the resistance, the internal convection resistance is 0.106 Celsius over watts. 
and then we have resistance number one which is the conduction resistance for the cast iron and that is going to be natural log of R2 R1 divided by 2 pi K of the cast iron um, times length once again we take the length to be 1 meter and then we find that to be 0 0.0002 Celsius over watts the second resi the resistance, the second conduction resistance is the one from the insulation and that is going to be natural log of R3 over R2 and this is going to be 2 pi K of the insulation and L and we find that to be 2.35 Celsius over watts and notice that it's very high because it's insulation so it's the one that it should be a stop in the heat from flowing so that's exactly what we expect and RO which is the uh, convection on the outside so it's 1 over HO and the surface area at position 3 and then we find that to be 0.154 Celsius over watts Notice that we need to find out what is the amount of uh, heat loss. So it's the amount of uh, Q uh, dot um, across this resistance. So what we need to do is first calculate the total resistance. And the total resistance is basically the addition of all the four resistances that we had. And we get that to be 2.61 Celsius over watts. So using this information, we are going to find that the value of Q dot is equal to the difference between the temperatures. We know the ambient temperatures at the two positions. And we also know the value of the total resistance in between them. So that tells us that the value of Q dot is equal to 121 watts. And if you recall, we wanted to find the per unit length so technically this is going to be, since we assume to be 1 uh, meter, so this is actually Q dot divided by L is 121 watts per, per meter, since we already chose 1 meter to be the length, so we could rewrite it this way. Okay, so the next step that we want to find that it is what is the temperature across the pipe and the temperature across the insulation. So basically we're going to find out what is the temperature across R1 and R2 and what is the temperature across R2 and R3. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're basically going to use the same relationship between the heat loss, the temperature difference and the resistances. What we're going to change is the uh, values of the delta T. What are the positions of the delta T? So we start Q by definition is delta T over the resistance. So we're going to do we're going to start by cast iron so inside of the pipe. So the value of the Q is exactly the same. And then we're going to do this is the delta T of the cast iron and the resistance that we have in between those two points is simply going to be R1. Therefore when we find the uh, changing the temperature inside or across the cast iron, we find it to be 0 0.02 Celsius. Okay, And then if we do exactly the same process inside of the insulation, we do the same process, so it's going to be Q dot is equal to the temperature of the insulation and the resistance that is in between them is going to be R2. So we do the same process and we find what the delta T is across the insulation. And then in that case, we find it to be 284 Celsius. Now let's see if our results make sense. So we have that in between all the materials, the amount of Q has to be the same, Q dot has to be the same. So we know that Q dot, if we rewrite this equation, is going to be Q dot times the resistance is equal to the change in the temperature. So as you could see, the change in temperature and the resistance are proportional to each other. We have the highest resistance inside of the insulation, therefore we expect to have the highest temperature change inside of the insulation. So that checks. 
The other thing that we have to see is now if we look at the temperature distribution, we start at uh, 320 inside of the steam and the outside has to be 5. And we know that there has to be that transition of temperature inside of that part. Cast iron is a good conductor of heat and also is very thin. So it's going to have a very small amount of change of temperature. We want the insulation to be the one that carries the highest amount of insulation. And what that means is that as an insulator, it has to be able to keep the hot in one side and the cold in the other side and basically avoid that mixing. So that's why we expect that high level of temperature difference.